I had literally just filmed this video and then I realized the framing was absolutely terrible and I had to scrap it and do this all again. So this video is probably going to be a bit shorter than normal, but it is what it is. Hello YouTube, my name is Isabella and welcome back to my channel, Stubbornly Bookish. Today I'm going to be sharing with you 20 books I'd like to read in 2020. I couldn't resist the sound of that title. Evidently, in the past few years I have mentioned 10 books and done like a 10 book yearly TBR that I really wanted to get to. 2018 was a great success, 2019 was an epic failure, and we're just not talking about it today. I'm not going to be giving full synopses for these books because we'd be here forever because again, it's 20 books. But I'm genuinely excited for all of these books. I really reflected and thought hard and I will actually actively be trying to read them in 2020. I'll be so annoyed if I don't, but let's just jump into the video. I figured let's start this list off with a bang. The first book I have here is Nevernight by G. Kristoff. No, I have not read the Nevernight series, even though it seems like something I would absolutely love. Yes, I've owned this since 2016. It is high time I read this story. It is adult high fantasy that follows a female assassin. I was nervous for such a long time getting to it just because she, merely of the hype, sheerly of the hype, whatever the term is. It is incredibly hyped here on booktube. Everyone has seemed to have read it and loved it, but it's time for me to weigh in. It's time for me to read Nevernight. I also really would like to get to, forgot the name, Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is her second ever published work, her first being Everything I Never Told You, a book I super loved in 2020. So when I found this used, I snatched the opportunity to get it and I can't wait to get to this story. She writes what I would describe as like literary mysteries, literary suspense-ish, just beautiful writing, family sagas, loved her first book, can't wait to get to this one. I also would really love to get to Want by Cindy Pond. This takes place in a futuristic Taipei, I think it's Taipei, and it follows these two main characters who are trying to take down this evil corporation. I have heard wonderful things about Cindy Pond's books from people who've read Cindy Pond. She's just not, I don't think, a widely known author, but I think I could really enjoy this story. I've been wanting to read it for a long time. And I actually forgot that this copy is signed. So yeah, fun. The next book I have on here is one that I'm incredibly nervous about. I would say most of these books, I think I are going to get very high ratings. This is the one book I'm incredibly nervous about. And that is King of Scars by Leigh Bardugo. Because of the reviews, I kind of shied away from it for a bit and then never got to it. And then I subsequently just went and read Ninth House by her and I gave it one star. So yikes. <laughs> I just know if I don't put this book on a list of something to read to make it an active goal I'm supposed to be working towards, I will never pick up this story. And that's not great. It's the first in a duology and it follows some characters from both of her series. The next book I have here is Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This is a book I intended to read in 2020. This is a book I fully intended on reading in 2019 and just didn't get around to it because I suck. But this is like an alternate reality story where Jane Eyre is actually a serial killer or like she kills serial killers. That premise just sounds phenomenal. And I know that this is a lot of people's like favorite book of all time. So I have very high expectations for this book. And unlike King of Scars, I, I have incredibly high expectations for this story. I think it will be phenomenal. I also just kind of threw on here An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. This, I believe, is a standalone adult fantasy story that features a sort of magical competition. I'm always down for a standalone adult fantasy story because we just don't get them super often. It's short. I think this will be a great palette cleanser for all the other adult fantasy books I intend on reading in 2020. I'm excited for this and I actually really love this cover. I think it's striking. One of the other 2019 releases on this list is A Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. Initially when I got this 
book I wasn't entirely sold on. I don't know, it just didn't seem very interesting to me. But then I started hearing what, what the story is actually about. I found out that this is a young adult standalone novel, fantasy, and it features an unlikely duo that has to pair up to kind of clear their names. A lot of people have loved this story. Like so many people loved it in 2019. So my expectations have been raised. I hope I really enjoy this book. I also am putting Truth Witch on this list by Susan Dennard. This is a, the start to a young adult high fantasy series that follows or has a bunch of these different witches and different types of magic, but it follows two witches who are best friend. One is a thread witch, one is a truth witch. Ha, there we go. There's supposed to be some good romances in here, a fantastic featured friendship, and it's time for me to finally start this series. I also really would like to read Girls Burn Brighter by Shoba Rayao. I believe this is an own voices story that follows two girls growing up in India. They're very poor but very ambitious and I believe they go through a lot of like real hardship and then later on in life they come back together and I think this story features an FF romance. Wow look at that. I just found out that this book is signed. Who? This is what happens when you actually open your book. I also really want to read Furthermore by Tahata Mafi. I believe this is the only middle grade on this list but this follows a sort of Alice inspired fantasy land. I believe our main character is named Alice and she has to team up with this boy that she hates to go on an adventure and essentially save her missing father. I believe this story is going to be crazy whimsical and that's all I really want from a middle grade fantasy. I think I'm gonna really enjoy this story. The next book on this list is Mirage by Somaya Dowd. This is one of the few books that I kind of forget the synopsis. I definitely forget a lot of the synopsis. This follows a our main character who's actually essentially a doppelganger of the very cruel queen and then she gets kind of pulled into this plot to kind of trade places with the queen or be the queen's body double. I think this is the start of a young adult trilogy. The sequel is set to come out in 2020, so I'm very excited to finally be picking this book up. I also would really like to get to Born by Jeff Vandermeer, and all I really know about it is that it features this weird little creature called Born, and I think people trying to protect him because if he falls into the wrong hands bad things will happen, maybe, not entirely sure. I would also really like to get to Darius the Greatest Not Okay by Adib Karam. This follows a half Persian main character who is clinically depressed and then travels to Iran and connects with the boy. I think there's a gay romance in here and everything about it just sounds really good. I think this is supposed to be a hard-hitting contemporary. I've seen a lot of people say that this book is very emotional. There's been a sequel announced. The movie rights have been sold. I I'm excited to get to this story. I also would like to pick up The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. This book I've been putting off for so long. So many people love it. So many people give this glowing reviews and I'm nervous. No, it is definitely time for me to stop putting off this book. I'm definitely going to be reading this in 2020. It sounds and very magical. Wonderful. I believe the writing in here is supposed to be utterly gorgeous. A book I'm entirely pissed that I didn't get to in 2019 is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. I'm actually genuinely mad that I didn't get to this book in 2019. This is an own voices story that follows a non-binary teen who has a like subsequent romance with another teen and it's just supposed to be really lovely, incredibly validating. I've seen so many people truly connect and love this book. I believe this is supposed to be incredibly emotional. There are some triggering things that go on in here, but ultimately our queer characters have a happy ending and I really want to read it. Okay, we are reaching the end, which is good because I'm exhausted. I also want to get to An Ember in the Ashes by Saba to hear. This is the first book in a young adult Roman inspired fantasy quartet. This is going to be four books. The three of them have been published and it's just high time I get to this story. I also intend on reading Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. This is an incredibly popular literary mystery kind of thing with possibly a different genre bending thing. I just know that this is an incredibly popular story like worldwide 
there's a movie that's been made of it, and I just think it's definitely time I get to it. It was published quite a while ago. It was shortlisted for the Man Booker in 2005, but I really would like to get to this book. The only graphic novel that I'm featuring on this list is Persepolis by Marianne Satrapi. I used to know how to say her name, but I don't anymore because it's been so long since I picked up this book. This is a graphic memoir that follows our main character, our author, during the Iranian Revolution. I also think this one was published a while ago, but I have heard people in my real life be incredibly interested in reading it, and I just think it's time I get to it. I'm glad I threw a memoir graphic, graphic novel on here, because hopefully I can read it quickly. <laughs> This has been intriguing for quite some time. The second to last book on this list is The Names They Gave Us by Emery Lord. This is supposed to be a hard-hitting young adult contemporary story. It focuses on a character whose mother is very sick with cancer and her mom then sends her away to this like different camp full of troubled youth to kind of like broaden her horizons and learn. I've been meaning to get to this one also for quite some time. The reviews have been honestly pretty stellar. The final book on this list, thank god because I'm tired, is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a sci-fi thriller, I think. Essentially our main character wakes up in a body that he doesn't recognize with people he doesn't recognize as his like wife and kids and he tries to piece together what the fuck is happening to him. It seems just so interesting and so many people love this book. So many people have given this like five out of five stars even though it's sort of like a cross genre thing that I am intrigued to pick it up. I almost said that is it for all the books I want to read in 2020 which is completely false but that is it for my 2020 20 book TBR. Stay tuned for my 2020 goals, though that should be coming out relatively soon. Uh, I have a lot of plans for 2020 and I'm excited for the new year to start, a new decade to start, crazy. Let me know down in the comments below if you have a 2020 TBR, if you filmed a video, link it down below, I'll be sure to check it out. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you again very soon. Bye.